All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Brad and Kyle channel. And today we're gonna talk about how to become a great spare shooter. Now Brad claims he's the best spare shooter on tour. <laughs> yeah. So I we claim. got a three, six, seven, ten. Brad, Here we you go. are the greatest spare shooter on tour. This should be no problem. So stay tuned for tips from Brad. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare and Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can take and learn from. Yeah, and Skillshare is extremely easy to use and if you're learning, if you're wanting to learn something specific, Skillshare has you covered. Recently, we just took the iPhone filmmaking class with Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. And we chose this class because we get a lot of questions on what is the best way to vlog, and a lot of times the easiest and most convenient is with your iPhone. So Kyle and I, we do use the iPhone quite a bit, so we figured there were some things that we could learn for our own personal use and to tell people when they ask us this question. Yeah, when we first started making YouTube videos, neither one of us knew anything about like filmmaking, editing, audio, none of it. So having resources like Skillshare makes our job way easier. And Skillshare has given our fans the opportunity to click the link in the description and the first thousand people that sign up through that link get one month free subscription of Skillshare that allows you guys to search whatever topics you want to learn. So go ahead, click that link in the description. All the information will be below and enjoy the video. All right, so we're on the topic of spares, and spares are always an interesting one because sometimes they get overlooked. Sometimes you see people that are unbelievable at spares, but they can't really seem to like win tournaments, but they're unbelievable at spares. Actually, that's me. <laughs> but uh, spares are, you know, they're, they're an extremely important part, but they're so much different than the, the strike shot. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize before we really get into it is, on the strike shot, you have a lot of changing variables. You got the oil changing, you're changing bowling balls, your opponents are changing the oil, um, time goes by, you know. There's a lot of things that change, but when we're looking at a spare, the way you shoot a spare might always be the exact same way you shoot the spare, the 10 pin. You might shoot that thing the same exact way, exact repetition. It's, it's the same thing as a guy throwing a dart at a triple 20. He's just going to aim there, and he's going to repeat it for the rest of his life. He's going to try and do his best. You know, that's not really a strike shot in bowling, but in spares, it is. So if we're talking about good spare shooters, they just repeat the same thing over and over again. So the way they've, they've found out how to do each spare is just through trial and error, through practice, through drills, and then you kind of just start to realize what works for you. Some, some people, some pros shoot left side spares kind of up the left side. You know, some people shoot them cross lane. Some people like to go mega cross lane at tens and some. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but the most important thing is you just repeat exactly. And, it, and it's simple. It, you know, the oil pattern doesn't matter as much on a spare shot as a strike shot because you're, it's just a straight shot. And I guess we should say that. You should probably always shoot straight at your spares, but if you're bowling on something really easy and you want to hook it a left side, okay, you'll probably see me doing that too. But in general, just a spare shot is a simple straight shot. There's no foolery going around. There's no oil moving. It's the same thing over and over. Yeah, so through all those things that Brad just said, it all adds up to creating a system for your spares. Yes. When you leave whatever spare that you leave, you want to already know basically how you're going to shoot it before you even step up there. You want to know that I stand on this board, I look here, I throw it like this with this ball, and this is how I pick it, and I've done it a million times. So Brad, let's go through your system a little bit. So even though we have a full rack here, let's just make it easy and pick a 10 pin. So explain to the viewers your thoughts on maybe how you're going to release it, what board you're standing on, and what board you're going to look at. Now the 10 pins, you know, one of the more common ones for right-handers and it's one of the more difficult ones because it's close to the gutter. You have less room to pick it than you would a pin that's not close to the gutter. So what I like to do and what I've always done is play super cross lane in as much oil as possible and I almost put a little bit of a backup on it because I want to eliminate that right gutter as possible. I don't want there to be any kind of like left hook or straightening out 
because then it has to go at the gutter and then straighten out. I almost want to eliminate the gutter and just use the lane totally. So I'm gonna stand as far left as I possibly can up against the ball return, and I'm gonna have a little bit of backup on this, and it's gonna go in the middle of the lane and then kinda go into the 10 pin. Okay, no pressure, but you have to pick this. Uh, easy. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Best parachuter on tour. <laughs> So that, so for you, now that strategy is staying pretty close to the same every time. Is there ever a time where you might change that strategy a little bit? Never, I never change a 10 pin strategy. I mean, maybe you shoot it like a three, six, nine, ten, a little differently, or maybe a four or a seven if you're bowling on a pattern that hooks a ton. But for the most part, it's just always the same. Yeah, and, I mean, and, it just the, is. and the reason Brad can keep it the same is because he, his release on his spare shot is so straight with no rotation, even a little backing up, that no matter what pattern you're on, that ball's doing pretty much the exact same thing. Now, if you had rotation on the ball, and say you were bowling on a short pattern, right? Well, you might have to adjust a little bit because now that ball's gonna hook more. And a lot of people use spare balls. I use a urethane ball, you use a urethane ball. Yeah. A lot of people use urethane balls, but a lot of people use spare balls. And if you're a two-hander out there, you almost have to use a spare ball. Now, you're not probably not gonna be as comfortable or used to like throwing a little bit of a backup at a 10 pin using a plastic ball because your whole life you've been able to kind of like rotate it and watch that plastic ball go straight. Now, I know some really great spare shooters that use plastic balls and they don't do the little backup thing. You know, they just throw a normal shot with a spare ball, which is what the spare ball is designed to do. Absolutely, so the spare system Starts with trial and error. Trial and error. I mean, and it, it should be pretty simple and basic. I mean, a 10 pin shoot cross lane, a seven pin shoot cross lane, you know, it's fairly basic angles, I would say. So trial and error, figure out where you gotta stand and look for each spare, and I'm talking every single pin, every combination that's left. You know, obviously sometimes there's goofy things that we leave on errant shots where we're like, okay, I haven't shot at this since I was six, yeah. when you leave a one seven ten. But everything else, you should have a good idea going up. Make sure you have a ball that goes pretty straight and a release that goes fairly straight. And then it's just practice and grind mode because there's no real secret to shooting spares. We can give you guys tips, this and that, but if you're not on the lanes putting the work in, and I'm not in shooting five 10 pins and picking four out of five is not a spare practice. No, 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 because a lot of times the important spares come in important moments let's say game eight of a tournament where you're a little bit more tired. Um, you know, the, the reason for just trial and error over and over again is it gets you to really focus on your spare. That way, if you have an important spare, like a 10 pin to make the US Open, like Mika Kovinimi who missed it, you know, which by the way, those, hap those things happen. And I wanna say like, just if you miss some spares, it doesn't make you a bad spare shooter. We all miss spares. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. No one is 100% on any spare. No. <laughs> And so uh, that's why trial and error is so important. That way, if you, if you get yourself in a position to have an important spare to win the league or something, you want to be comfortable knowing that, hey, I've worked on this. I've practiced this. It's a simple release because it's just a spare. You don't have to do anything tricky. Um, and then you can go and execute the spare. But without trial and error, uh, it's going to be hard to be comfortable on some of these spares. All right, Brad, well, since you are the greatest spare shooter on tour. Take out the seven. See if we can get the seven out here. Go three for three. By the way, <laughs> Norm is probably watching this video puking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Claiming I'm the best spare shooter on tour. But we'll give it a shot. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. There no. is no pressure here. I can't back up with the seven, so I'm going to give this one a little bit of. Oh, that's got a hook. Bam! What on, a video. On point for the video. What a video. That's the one take right there. <laughs> All right, so those are a few tips on how you can become a better spare shooter. It really is a different aspect of the game than the strike shot. There doesn't have to be as much thought, nearly as much thought. A simple formula that you come up with, spare ball, no spare ball, your thing. It honestly is up to you. The most important thing is you practice it enough to where you can just do it over and over and over again. Yep, make sure you guys, you know, like and subscribe. We also have a membership. Me and Brad, Coach Daniel, it's awesome. We love our members. Thank you to everyone that's already joined. If you're interested in joining, just click the link in the description. 
See you later.